Hello and welcome to the 15th annual LD Micro main event here in Los Angeles. Today I'm sitting with Ben Arez, EVP of Rival, formerly Greenbox POS, new ticker symbol RVYL on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. Ben, thank you so much for joining us here today and sitting down to talk and share your story. Please tell our audience a little bit about the company, the rebranding, and uh, the focus right now. Okay. So uh, a little bit about the Rival.com, I, I have to get used to that. Uh, formerly GreenboxPOS.com. Uh, the company was uh, established in uh, June of uh, 2017. It uh, became a public company by way of reverse acquisition in uh, April of 18 and uplisted to NASDAQ uh, in uh, January of last year. Um, with uh, two raises, uh, $51 million for the uplisting raise and $100 million for acquisitions, uh, of which we've completed uh, four this year. Uh, in terms of uh, technology, the company does one thing, uh, but does it better than anybody else. Uh, we do blockchain ledger-based payment systems. We are on our third generation uh, that uh, was deployed uh, uh, last year. Uh, in terms of uh, the scale of the business, um, we uh, launched the, the first generation of our technology the first quarter of 2019 and processed uh, about $170 million for the year, which we thought was pretty cool introduction to business yeah. and a vote of confidence for the company and, and the technology. Uh, bringing you up to date to today, um, in the last uh, quarter, we processed about 500 million on average per month. Wow. Uh, so pretty amazing scale. We see no barrier to scalability so far. And we plan to be at the, the billion dollar a month range within 12 months. Wow. You seem to have tremendous momentum from the inception of the company to getting to where you are now. Um, and, and those kinds of reportings and, and capabilities. Uh, what's your background? How'd you get involved in all this? Uh, well, I'm an old dude. <laughs> uh, I started uh, back in the 80s uh, at the, uh, uh, with the startup team at Intel. Wow. I uh, built uh, microprocessors and memory chips. Uh, later on, collaborated on the uh, uh, establishment of the first uh, personal computer. That's my claim to fame. Um, then I left uh, Intel to uh, set up my own uh, uh, technology company, which uh, I sold to IBM back in the early 80s. Wow. Uh, worked for them for a while, then uh, was stolen from IBM by Microsoft, and uh, uh, was part of the founding team at Office, Microsoft Office. Uh, managed the engineering of uh, the international versions of Office for 14 years. Wow. I uh, worked with the, uh, on Bill Gates' team uh, called uh, Trustworthy Computing for about three years. Uh, then uh, attempted retirement for the, the first time. Uh, and since two more times, you got out, I, I'm not very good at retirement. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, started the uh, technology company again. Uh, ran that for about 12 years and then uh, uh, decided to uh, go and live in, in San Diego, um, where my son, who is an Olympian, can train wow. in the winter uh, for the Olympic Games in Tokyo that never happened. Uh, but instead, Greenbox happened. Um, I met uh, Freddie Nissan, my partner and co-founder uh, and current CEO of uh, Greenbox and Rival. And, uh, from a meeting every day at the gym, uh, Greenbox was born, and, and here we are today at uh, 500 million a month, five years later. Wow, at the gym, it's an underrated place to uh, get ideas stirring, right? Anything to avoid working out. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, yeah, obviously you've been passionate about technology for a yes. long time. Uh, where, does it, where do you think that kind of stemmed from? Um, I like cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, and technology is where it's at. Uh, either you you join um, where it is happening or you cause things to happen. Uh, I guess paraphrasing what uh, Leah Yakoka used to say, uh, lead, follow, get out of the way. Uh, technology is where it is. Yeah. 
Um, and, um, you know, I followed for a while, I led for a while, and now I'm in the forefront of the payment technology. Uh, it's a very exciting place to be. I, I totally agree. It's fantastic. And, and as far as blockchain-based uh, ledger services go, what, what sets you apart from anybody else in the space? So the Greenbox technology is very unique. Uh, first of all, it's centralized. Uh, and most other uh, stable coins and tokens are decentralized. Uh, that causes our technology to be extremely safe. Uh, we uh, allow for real-time auditing of our ecosystem. So it, at all times, you know that the, uh, the system is is one-to-one uh, -one backed by fiat. There is no risk of run on bank. Uh, you can always exit at any time. Transactions settle in real time or near real time. Um, and uh, uh, having a system with a single source of truth is very important. It's uh, transparent. Everybody sees the same information. Uh, it's good for the, uh, the merchants, the uh, consumer, and for the regulator. Uh, collecting true taxes is, is possible. Um, and it's, it's the, the shape of things to come. No, absolutely. I think that's the, the trajectory that we're seeing right now. Um, most certainly. And I had the opportunity to sit in on your presentation earlier. Oh. Um, would you like Thank to share you. with our audience the, uh, the story you were telling about uh, Samoa? Yes. So uh, I really enjoy this uh, story of uh, uh, launching a new technology story in the island of American Samoa uh, through collaboration with the uh, Territorial Bank of American Samoa. Uh, we launched uh, a complete new technology story for this ecosystem. Um, everything in banking, payroll, uh, uh, payments, uh, debit cards, credit cards, is all centralizing on our technology. Mm -hmm. uh, with the exit of the uh, uh, ANZ Bank out of American Samoa, there was a big hole in banking services for the island, and most of it was handled in cash. Um, as I said in the presentation, it's not a huge opportunity for us. Uh, from the monetary perspective, um, the GDP of American Samoa is about uh, 600 million and uh, the total cashless transactions on top of that are about additional 400 million. So this is a billion dollar a year opportunity uh, for us. But on top of that, it's a showcase. It uh, uh, gives us the ability to display what we can do um, and what the consumers do given the opportunity. So competing just with cash, which was the only alternative on the island, we have now um, within two quarters of deployment reached approximately 50% market share wow. of the addressable universe That's great. Uh, over there, which is incredible. Yeah. That means that this is what people want. This is what the government want. Uh, and it gave us uh, an opportunity to present our technology within uh, the, the context of a central bank. Uh, Territorial Bank of American Samoa is a, is a federal uh, bank member. Uh, huge opportunity for us, and I'm sure we'll see that same technology uh, deployed in other closed-loop systems. Excellent. And what do you say to individuals that are, are hesitant of digital currencies and, and moving towards this kind of maybe one world reserve currency of some sort of digital asset. Uh, wh what are your thoughts on that? So it's interesting. I, I'm old enough to live through several uh, rounds like that. And, and I, I think the, the most relevant is the, the way digital banking was deployed back in 94, 95. Uh, initially, you know, banks used to say, we are banks, we're not technology companies. Uh, you want a bank, you have to come here. This is, there's a sign on the door, there's a business hours, come here and we'll do business with you. But within a year, banks that did not have technology deployed were left behind. Yeah. And there was a, a mass migration uh, of consumers towards banks that have technology, that gave you the ability to do remote banking, online banking, um, and that basically changed the industry. So 
critical mass can happen just with two components out of the three that impact the industry joining forces. It could be the government and the consumers, consumers and the merchants. Any two of them can cause this to happen. We are now in a situation where all three are joining forces. The consumer, the merchants, and the regulators all want this to happen. Yep. So it's going to happen whether you like it or not. And I think uh, consumers uh, are better off adopting uh, when they feel it's safe and when the technology is, is regulated and performing uh, at the same specifications as we would expect from a financial system, responsible financial system. All right. And how far away would you say we are from this convergence? Yeah, days, weeks, months, years? So this is a geography question. Um, if you talk about uh, uh, South Pacific, I think we're already there. Wow. Uh, and in fact, we see trends in South Pacific that go beyond uh, the current uh, state of, uh, of the technology. For example, with the Petro Yuan, trying to look at the scenarios where digital currency tracks commodities and not fear, uh, which I think is the shape of things to come. Uh, Europe is almost there. Uh, Christine Lagarde is doing a, a great job with the European Central Bank. It's a great supporter of the CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency. Mm -hmm. And we see that uh, happen as we speak. Uh, here, uh, you know, Gary Gensler, the head of the SEC, is, is a great supporter of digital currency. Um, although he has an interesting perspective of it, saying, we don't need any additional regulation. It's a security, regulated like a security. We already know how to do that. Interesting approach. Um, I think some uh, exposure to commodity or commoditization of digital currency has to happen. We will see that happen in the, in the near future. Um, but more direct to your question, I think a critical mass in adoption of digital currency is probably no more than 24 months away. Wow, that's very soon. And who ultimately is going to have control or oversight? Is it going to be the banks? Is it going to be the corporations? Is it going to be the governments? Yeah, we saw in the last few years, uh, for instance, in Canada, uh, uh, Trudeau was able to, to shut off access to currency for uh, people that were protesting against him. Is that something people should be concerned about, political opponents shutting down access to digital funds and things like that? Yeah, so um, it's a very astute question. Uh, and again, it goes to geography. Um, there were attempts here, for example, with FedCoin, which is an initiative from MIT that Gary Gensler was involved in, yep. um, where the implementation of digital currency uh, was such that it gave the issuer control over acquisition. So, for example, um, that technology, I'm not saying it would go there, but it could uh, control the consumption of sugar from someone who has diabetes. Yeah. Um, imagine a world where that can happen. So, uh, but I, I think it's a sort of uh, the old uh, uh, Middle Eastern saying, you know, people are like soap. If you press too hard, they run away. <laughs> uh, and I think that if you, if you do overregulate, uh, people will find solutions, and just like a cryptocurrency was, was born for that purpose, v variations of stablecoin will come together to circumvent that trend. Uh, perhaps it's a stablecoin that is attached to gold, um, and where you have physical gold and you can exit into the, the metal anytime you want, that will be the death of fiat. Of the petrodollar. Right. Yeah. Or the petrodollar. Yeah. Um, so, I think it's a it's a delicate balance. Uh, hopefully, we have enough smart people with the administration to cause that to happen. And righteous people. <laughs> well, righteous you. righteous is uh, subjective. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us here today. You're is welcome. there anything in closing you would like to tell investors to keep an eye out for, aside from the recent name change? Uh, any big announcements? Uh, well, the only thing I can talk about is to uh, continue and direct uh, people to the proxy of uh, volume of business. Uh, this is the best measure for the success, compliance, and health of our ecosystem. Uh, as I said, we grew from 
170 million a year to over 500 a month in the span of five years. Wow. Um, and we are just getting warmed up. Um, we, we will be um, in, in the billion dollar a, year, uh, a month running rate um, probably within 12 months. Wow. Keep watching. That's the uh, that's the bellwether. Absolutely. I've been I've been following the story for about three years, and it's amazing to see the growth so far. Uh, and again, we thank you so much for coming here, supporting the Happy event, and uh, please let us know if there's anything we can do to help. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you.